Hey everyone, it's Stephanie again, and you are tuned into the review of Love at First Flight, Season 1, Episode 6. So, this episode was where the families came and got to spend time and meet with each couple. And is it me, or do these episodes feel like very long? I feel like there's so much jam packed into each episode that it feels like a couple of hours, which means there's really good content because you really get to experience each couple like in its fullness throughout the episode. So it was really good to watch. Um, I'm just gonna kind of jump right in because we have so much to kind of uncover. So let's kick it off with Stephanie and Ryan. So the beginning of the episode, we find Stephanie and Ryan still struggling off of Vegas. Um, Ryan, you know, like I said last episode, he shut down. Uh, this episode, you can see that he is still shut down. It shows throughout the episode until the very end just how hurt and shut down he is. So their activity is doing like a race car. They race around the tracks, and so they bring out their backseat passengers, which is um, their parents. So, and I think maybe a sibling was there. It, it kind of mixed up depending on what couple, um, but definitely their, their parents for sure. Um, he got to spend time with her mom and dad and she got to spend time with his mom. It was very uncomfortable because here we are, you know, fresh off an argument and every couple knows how that feels where you're like at each other's throats or really hurt and then you kind of have to turn on the charm for, you know, your parents or his parents or whomever or friends or an event. So it's a lot of work that has to go into like getting out of that headspace to at least be accommodating. But what's even more difficult is this is the first time that they have met each other. So it's like you really are supposed to be on your best behavior and you have these really ill feelings going on. So we find that while Stephanie is racing, Ryan is talking with the mom and the dad and i felt like you know he explained the situation to them i felt like i don't know that i would have done that but i think he was probably so uncomfortable i probably wouldn't have done that but i think he was so uncomfortable that he didn't really know what to say so sometimes we're kind of like oh we shouldn't say that but we don't know what else to say so we just say what it is because at least that's accurate so he's talking to his parents about you know her parents about what's happening and the father said um, a couple of things that I really enjoyed. One, he asked, okay, well, if the shoe was on the other foot, would you be okay with that? And Ryan said, I wouldn't have even engaged in that. So that was good um, and because he was trying to gauge what kind of guy he is or if there's a double standard. Two, which I love, is his her father said, well, how long are you going to take to get over it? And so Ryan was like, okay, I'm going to get over it pretty soon, which clearly we can see that he's not. But... What I enjoyed about watching Stephanie's dad say, you know, so how long are you gonna take to get over it? That was like nothing but old school marriage wisdom. Like you can see that they've been, you know, he's been married for a long time to Stephanie's mom and they kind of know how to rapidly move beyond stuff. I, I know that that's something that new couples really struggle with because when we're younger, you know, we're fighting against all these things and like in, in our generation nowadays, there's so many distractions and everything is a thing sometimes everything is a conversation when it's not really that serious and you could see that wisdom was kind of like you need to you know address it and move on um and i'll just give you a quick example like many years ago i was watching uh i was at at lunch with my mom and i saw this old couple kind of bantering back and forth and the the woman said like D don't talk to me for the rest of lunch which i was like i think in my very early 20s and i was like oh my god they ate lunch quietly and then like when they were done he got up he grabbed her tray he put it in the garbage and then they held hands on the way out and i will never forget that moment because it was a testament of how when you have been a seasoned married couple or a seasoned couple in a relationship a lot of that little stuff you gotta let it go even the big stuff you learn to mitigate if you're really committed to a marriage you don't just let it go because things are uncomfortable or you're not enjoying yourself or this person did something that's even really hurtful. Um, you have to find a way to kind of move on. So I love that piece of wisdom. If you guys watch it back, you'll kind of pick up on it because it says more than what he said. What he said is, how long are you gonna take to get over it? What he is really saying is kind of how I just broke it down in terms of like, you've got to find a way to 
you know, pick up the pieces and keep it moving because this is not the worst thing ever. So I enjoyed seeing that. Um, we watched Stephanie and Ryan kind of be uncomfortable throughout the entire episode. Um, if we take it to the end, um, well, let me backtrack. Ryan and his mother have a conversation about the situation and Ryan is really, really hurt. And his mother, of course, you know, at first I thought she was just going to completely side with him and not give him like that kind of push. But I love that she, you know, she honored her son's feelings and, you know, felt bad for him because he felt bad, but also said, listen, me and your dad, we have never given up. So kind of like, how are you going to pick up the pieces and move on? And that was good to see because we often go to our parents for advice and, you know, we're raised to believe that what they say is gold. But as you become an adult, you realize that your parents don't always, even though they always have your best interests, don't always have the answers. You know, if your parents are not together, they don't necessarily know how to n navigate a relationship to tell you how to stay together. That, that, that might sound awful, but it's the truth. If one of your parents is not good with money, you don't ask that parents how to keep your money just because they're your parent. They don't know. So it's really important to value and honor your parents' um, um, you know, feedback, but honestly be smart about it because we see Stephanie have a conversation with her parents and it's the complete opposite. I mean, if you could have watched this, I literally had my mouth open because she was discussing the episode of Vegas and the way that she discussed it was completely different. You know, they, they performed a routine. Girl, they did not perform a routine unless the routine was balls in your face like this is what it was you were straddled you were dry humped yes it was that type of space but say you know what mom and dad like honestly you know it was kind of like a little sexual probably a little bit too much it was what it was but own that don't say they did a routine and you know share the story that is very one-sided and you know doesn't really tell the truth of it all um, and so now her mom is kind of saying, you know, she said, I disrespected him, which I'm glad she owned that. But then her mom said, no, you didn't disrespect him. And, you know, she made some snide comments, which is an example of how your parent may not always lead you into the right direction. Partly, I'm going to blame partly um, Stephanie for that because she wasn't honest about uh, the true experience of Vegas and those lap dances. And then I'm going to blame her mom for that because like, like if I go to my mother, I want a mature, wisdom-filled feedback. I don't want a bunch of jokes that only, you know, rub my back for my bad girl behavior. Like, you know, at this point, you know your daughter well enough. She's almost 30. Like, you've got to know that she's probably a little bit of a wild child. Like, ask her really and truly instead of kind of just siding with her and making it seem like this guy is, like, really not appropriate or is making a big deal about things because if we future trip a little bit you're always going to side with her you're not really going to be in the um scope of supporting the union meaning okay love you daughter you're my daughter i support you but like what's really going on i want to support the marriage so that like rubbed me the wrong way to kind of see that but then it's like it's really stephanie's fault kind of setting setting up the alley-oop for that so we find them throughout the episode kind of, you know, going through their own things together and separately and spending time with family. And I thought family was a really good thing to kind of break the ice a little bit. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't break it enough for them to get into a different space. And we find them at the end of the episode discussing um, where they are. And Ryan is still completely shut down. You know, she says, I really have feelings for you. You know, they're stronger than they were before. Um, she's really kind of putting herself out there. I don't know if I remember, because I've watched so many things. I do reviews on Married at First Sight too. I don't know if I remember her really owning it. And I, like, I know she said, you know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I disrespected you. But I don't really know that she really owned it. But I also don't think that Ryan is giving her a fair shot because he's sitting there like, let's be friends. You know, this show is not about being friends. You're looking to be married with someone like let's be friends, we have a good time together, and I'm not open to anything more right now, which was really hard for her to hear. And, you know, in the confessional, or as the episode is ending, he says, you know, I hope the next city takes us somewhere else. Okay, so tip for everyone, especially those who love to travel, uh, where you go is where you are. 
So traveling to another city does not bring about a geographical cure. I used to work with a lot of you know, addicts as well in treatment and they'd wanna jump from treatment place to treatment place because that would be the cure. And you follow yourself everywhere you go, all your issues go with you too. So now you're just feeling pissy in a sunnier state. It's not gonna change if you don't change it. So what I would love to see Ryan do is just really own it and say, you know what, I'm really hurt. Um, I didn't like what I saw. I didn't want to have to um, babysit you and kind of make you someone. I kind of wanted to see who you are. And it makes me question, hey, is my wife a wild child that won't be able to kind of honor and respect us if we move forward? Because that's what it really is. He's basically looking at her and saying, I don't really know if this is the type of woman that I want to be with because I would never do this to her. And if she does this, is this going to continue? And I'm still pissed about it. And it's okay to say that. You know, sometimes we, it's okay to move on and not be in the best space. Just own that you're moving moving on, own that you're moving cautiously, but kind of, oh, you know, being kind of, oh, I'm okay, and let's just see, it's just, it's like, she has to take ownership, but you also have to take ownership of, you know, how you're really feeling and how you're going to move forward, otherwise, why are you on the show? Like, if we're not going to move forward, then why go to the next city, you know? I know this has already been filmed, but I'm going based on kind of what's happening as I watch it. So that is Stephanie and Ryan. I think they can, you know, this is not the worst thing. So they can totally turn it around. They just have to want to. And he has to want to. And she has to be really honest about what her action shows. And this single girl wild child, if you're trying to be somebody's wife, that's got to be out the window. So that's Stephanie and Ryan. Stephanie and Michael, I'm loving them. They're becoming, you know, I don't want to say one of my favorite couples, but I kind of just did. So um, I'm enjoying seeing their budding friendship. There's something so comfortable about them right now. Um, we've gotten over, you know, who is who is what and who's holding back and who's not coming. We, not to say that that's all said and done, but we see them in a very relaxed place. They have the Stephanie and Mike show and it's fun. They really enjoy each other and they have really connected in a way that um, meets the foundational stuff at least from what i've seen so now it's kind of like bells and whistles so they go to um seattle they're all in seattle this episode they go to i want to call it the fisherman's wharf but i don't even know if that's correct <laughs> but they go to something like that a fish market or something and they meet up with their families um, michael's sister and uh, father comes stephanie's sister and mother come and they spread apart and they have to shop for each other and so, of course, they go with the opposite. Michael goes with sister and mom. Stephanie goes with sister and dad. And so they shop together, um, and they have a good time, and they're trying to figure out things. And, of course, the family isn't going to give them, you know, what they should and shouldn't do because, you know, that would defeat the purpose of how well do you know my son, how well do you know my daughter or sister or brother. And um, so you find little digs where I think at one point Stephanie's mom said, like, you know, if you're not a foodie, then you may not want to do this. Um, mom, you know, I'm sure that that's not the biggest issue that would get in the way. So, um, you know, you find little digs because even uh, Stephanie was walking with, with uh, Michael's family and was thinking about fruit. And she said, like, oh, he likes mango or he likes blueberries. I just saw him have blueberries. The reality is... Right now, we don't know a lot about each other that you would learn over time. These things that we learn about each other, those are like subconscious things as you experience someone. But because it's so jam-packed, you really have to go based off of what you know for sure. I just saw him eat blueberries. That's what I know he likes. And his sister kind of gives a dig like, well, he likes grapes. You know, and it was like, wah, wah, like, okay. You know, so you get a lot of those. But they did a great job where they got each other what they enjoyed and they passed the mission so that was good to see we see stephanie talk with her family about how good of a guy he is you can tell mom is not going to sugarcoat anything and she says she likes him she thinks that he's a good person and um you see stephanie really uh, come full circle with really how she feels about who he is and how she enjoys him and you know how she hopes that this could be the last person she's with they really both seem to have a good spirit that's in tune um what i um no now this is michael so we see michael with his family um they you know like her as well um Michael really says, you know, we have a really solid friendship that could, you know, go somewhere and I really enjoy her. We have a good time together. The sister says um, that she feels like 
uh, Stephanie is a type which she is um, <laughs> I feel like a lot of Stephanie's are because so am I um, Stephanie is a type and she's also friendly and outgoing but she feels like that could compete with Michael so that is where I completely disagree um, I don't know if they had to find something that wasn't gonna work out, but I completely disagree with that So Stephanie and Michael are both friendly and outgoing, but they're at different levels So his sister says, you know, you're very friendly and outgoing and you're the life of the party and you know She's very strategic, but she's also friendly and outgoing as well So I feel like that could be a competitive thing in no way is it competitive because they're not at the same level so a lot of times you'll have a spouse who's like very much like not friendly and outgoing and then you'll have one who is friendly and outgoing that's polar opposites that doesn't always work out well then you'll have a spouse you'll have two spouses who are very friendly and outgoing and they're the lives of the of the party but they also combust <laughs> that doesn't work out well and then you have a spouse who is the life of the party but is a little more reserved and then you have a life of the party who kind of jumps in the pool and has a good time that spouse who jumps in the pool has a good time knows how to pull out the the reservation from that other spouse so babe let's have more fun or let's do this or let's try this and you've seen in the past where stephanie says he's relaxed me he's made me have more fun and i'm sure she being the one who's a little more reserved even being friendly and outgoing pulls him back from the edge when he's about to jump off and i think that that is a great mix i don't think that they will compete at all because they're not at the same level we've seen them you know when they did a couple of episodes back when they did the episode with the kids we found that although they're both friendly and outgoing they both naturally fell into their roles you know stephanie was taking care of things making sure you know the kids were taken care of doing the organizing mike was playing with the kids making sure they're all still alive and making sure that everything is good but they did it in different ways and that was a way to see their friendly and outgoing side work very well together so i did not like that and i just really want like families you know this is for you when you're giving advice be careful of how you're giving it especially if you know you're someone of influence because people will you know someone who trusts you will take on what you said and I've seen this happen with like a lot of moms you know single moms um, sisters they kind of get like it's something with the men where they kind of get in the way sometimes and or it's really hard to get in and it's 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 not fair don't don't come up with something just because you may not feel some type of way or nobody's good enough for your brother or your son or whatever the case may be the reality is you cannot fill that role mom sister so don't don't like get in the way of that because when she said that I was like oh my god like how is it not clear that they actually are very compatible together even being both friendly and outgoing so that's my two cents we find them kind of you know go throughout the rest of the episode they have a cute little date at the end of it and you know they're kind of moving forward and talking about next steps so I really enjoyed watching them so that is Stephanie and Michael Jenna and Kale um, so Jenna and Kale they do a boating activity I really don't even know what to call it they do some boating activity they're on the boat with family and friends um, but they do a boating activity where they have to work together and they do really well together we find them leaving Vegas in a really good place you know we celebrated uh, Kale's birthday and they were in a good place communicating and enjoying each other um, they first are met with the family in the hotel room and so at first they don't even know who it is you know like Jenna opens the door and thinks it's like someone who's part of the crew she has no idea until they sit down and say hey I'm Kale's sister I'm Kale's mother and vice versa so we see them kind of meet each other's family figure out if they're gonna work together um, it's uncomfortable to watch Kale's conversation with her mom and sister because he says you know we've gone through really tough times and some parts of her is great and then you know he wasn't sugarcoating it and and they have gone through some tough times and so her sister and mother who know her and love her and love all these sides of her and who probably get the best of her you know you could see they're a little like what do you mean she's not whatever but i i think they also know that she is somebody who's very strong and she is not going to be somebody who's easy to get to and you even see the sister say you know she kind of works backwards like she shows you kind of the parts of her that aren't so great and then she softens um and 
Jenna, you know, on the flip side is able to talk to his family about, you know, him being good husband material. She even talks to her family about that, um, but not being able to go level deep with him and still struggling to do that. So they do the boating activity. It works out really well. They end up going out later on and you're able to see them kind of have a real conversation. The push for um, depth is necessary, but it's also like it needs to be happening organically. Um, Kale asks about, you know, Jenna's like the worst part of Jenna's history and she says when she was very depressed and she talks a little bit about that. So it was really great to see them um, have a real deep conversation. It seems that Kale is still um, very timid, very buttoned up, and there's clearly an emotional block there. Um, I don't know if it's specific to Jenna. I would assume that he's like that a lot in pretty much every relationship. It's just that because Jenna initially shows up with thorns, you know, there's a sweeter side to her as we've seen, but she shows up with thorns that probably has affected how quickly he's willing to kind of dive in. So that's Jenna and Kale. We'll, we'll see how they can matriculate. I'm not getting any romantic vibes from them. You know, I want to say that I am, but I'm not. Um, but we'll, we'll see what the next episode holds. They're, they're very different and I could see some areas of compatibility but they're both kind of like on the edge nobody is even at most they put their toe in the pool like nobody has nobody's sitting on the edge that legs dangling even so i feel like you know it's time to kind of wrap it up um so i really don't know what's going to happen with them i don't foresee that it's going to be a match and it's also a short period of time so i feel like they're in a pretty good spot now where they can actually develop, but do they have six more weeks? No, they only have a week. So we shall see how that goes. And so our last couple is Alma and Michael. So we find Alma and Michael actually not doing an activity this week because unfortunately Alma's mother um, fell down and had a concussion. So she was really worried as any of us would be and she flew home to see her mom to make sure she's okay and, and Michael went with her. So this was a really good um, to see because this is real life. You know, if we're going on vacation and God forbid something happens to one of our parents, we're, we're changing that whole thing around, whether it's a show, whether it's anniversary, whatever the case may be. And we jump in and we do what needs to be done and you see him automatically jump up to support her. And because she loves, loves, loves family, and he does too, um, you get to see how she appreciates him kind of dropping everything and going with her to handle that. So that was really good. We get to see her spend time with her family and talk about how he is really good husband material. You know, obviously I don't think he's like her type, but she has kind of gotten over that to really see who he is as a man and how he'll show up as a husband based on what she's seen. And we get to see him visit her and visit the family and he shows up with flowers and, and it was really sweet to see. Um, it's really important when you show up and you meet family that you are um, representing more than your being there for their significant other. So flowers, especially for moms and stuff, that's really sweet touch because it's like I was not only thinking of my, you know, girlfriend or wife, I'm thinking beyond that. I'm thinking about her mother. And so that was a nice touch for the first meeting. And you can tell that they get good vibes from him. The mom, you know, had a good time with him and said, thank you for coming. And he was relaxed and it was good to see. And that is really important for her because she says, you know, whoever I end up with really needs to get along with family. And that's really, really important. You know, a lot of people try to ignore that and say it's just us against the world, or it doesn't have to be. When you get married, you do marry into family. And whether y'all are close or not, you take on whatever's going on in the dynamics. So it, it, it is best that you get along with them. Um, and it's best that over time you build a relationship. It's not instant. People love to say that, you know, that once you get married and this is my sister-in-law and this is my brother-in-law, it's not instant because you guys are still people. So there still has to be time that builds an organic relationship. But you want to be in a family where you desire that because you enjoy those people. So that is Alma and Michael. Um, you know, the show's ending so quickly. Like, I don't know where I was, but I just realized that the next episode is the finale. So I'm interested to see how this kind of wraps up and how it goes from here. You know, I'm sending good energy to all the couples. And if I had to do predictions, I would say Stephanie and Michael go beyond this for sure. At least I would love to see it. Um, Alma, I'm, Alma and Michael, I'm not sure. I mean, 
I, I really don't know. I would like to see them give it a real shot because I think that they have potential. Uh, Jenna and Kale, I don't see it. And just gonna be blunt. <laughs> and who else? Stephanie and Ryan, they have potential as well, but they kind of have both um, some growing up to do on each side. So that's it. Let me know what you thought. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next review.